Good morning, everybody. Well, that was great. You guys actually said good morning back. Thank you so much. Cool. Uh, we are so happy to have you. If you're not, if you're watching us online today, you don't get the view that I have. I see a, almost a packed house today. That's a wonderful experience. Amen. Lots of faces here that we we haven't seen in a while. So welcome back. Um, lots of faces I haven't seen in at least two weeks because, uh, you know, now I'm back. So uh, I'm happy to see you guys. You look great. If you're watching at home, I bet you look great in your pajamas too. So we're happy to have you. Uh, if this is your first time with us or maybe your information has changed or perhaps you just have something that you'd like for us to know, you can fill out the connect card in the seat back in front of you and drop it in the offering uh, box on your way out the door. Uh, we have a, a sign now that says ties and offerings. It, it also should say connect cards, but it looks like a little church. It's on your way out the door on the right hand side. Uh, you can put your ties, offerings, connect cards in through the slot in the top and we'll get those later today. If you're at home, you can fill out a Connect card on the app as well. Uh, if you don't have that now, uh, the easiest way to get it is to text LFCOG space APP to the number 77977. You'll get a text message that says, Welcome to Push Bay. You hit the link and you download our app and you can fill out Connect cards, prayer requests, you can find out what songs we're going to do ahead of time. You can also be easily directed to our live services when we're online and our YouTube page. You can see all kinds of archived services uh, that go way back. So all kinds of, plus all of our children's ministry stuff is on there. That's the place to be is on the app. So uh, we appreciate if you guys would, would download that. Just a few announcements, some things that are coming up in the near future. Uh, the ABLE Pregnancy Resource Center is still doing their baby bottle drive. Now, those bottles are due next Sunday, Mother's Day, uh, and uh, we've gotten a few of them returned. Uh, but if you still want to grab one, there's a handful of them still available as you exit the building on your left today. Uh, but next to the baby bottles is the Mardi Bras for a Cause it still feels weird saying that from the announcement. I've been saying it for weeks now, but it's still funny. Maybe I'm just immature. I don't know. But that is taking place on Tuesday, May 11th, uh, here in town at 5 to 7 p.m. But what we are doing is we are gathering and collecting women's items uh, from undergarments to feminine hygiene products, shampoo, conditioners, the whole deal. And we are collecting them for women in the whole local homeless shelters or uh, uh, all of those kind of things. So uh, it's an excellent cause and we're happy to be part of it. It's sponsored by the Rotary Club and WVBA. So uh, it's not our idea, but we're anytime we can serve the community, we need to rise up and be the church and help the community in any way we can. So that's one way to do that. Those things, uh, although the event is scheduled for Tuesday, May 11th, we will stop collecting also next Sunday on Mother's Day. So bring your bras and bottles to the church <laughs> next week. <laughs> Just what you gotta do, all right? I'm glad you guys thought it was funny. I was a little worried about how that was gonna go up. So, Speaking of women, uh, Daughters of the King has their Women's Workday rescheduled for May 15th. Please contact Dana Steele for more information and how you can be a part of that. They uh, were really excited to do it, and uh, the weather got in the way, but they're looking to reschedule that and help do some things around the church. Um, Jerry, do you still need someone to help take a tree down? Yeah, we'll do that day as well. That day as well. So on May 15th, if you want to help cut down to those last two dead trees over on our property, uh, please contact Jerry Steele, and he'll get you on the schedule. Uh, they were going to do that last week, but it was so windy, you can't take down a tree that big in the wind. So, And the last announcement I have for us is that our yard sale will be making a triumphant return on September 17th and 18th. Yes, triumphant. Uh, it's a, a great thing. We love the yard sale here. It's a big deal. If you haven't been a part of a landmark yard sale, you don't know what you're missing. So it is September 17th and 18th. The reason we're talking about it now is because Sue has already started collecting stuff. So if you would like to help, please contact Sue Cahill and she will get you put to work even now. So those are the announcements. Would you stand and pray with us as we continue in musical worship this morning? God, thank you so much for today. 
Thank you for the opportunity we have to gather, uh, not just together with other believers, as wonderful as that is, but we can gather in your presence, whether that's here in this building or in our homes or uh, whether that's live or watching this later. God, we come into your presence today. We ask that you would speak to us, starting with these songs. God, may first as we sing about leaning on your everlasting arms and as we continue to worship, these songs are not just fun background music to start our day, but these songs teach us things about you and how much you love us and how we can connect to you. We pray that you would speak to us through song today. And as we go and, and, and listen and, and dig into your word later, we ask that you would open our ears, open our minds, and open our hearts to what it is you have for us today. God, may we put all of our thoughts and worries and plans aside, at least for now, so we can focus on you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm going to read to you from Psalm 23. I just have a feeling maybe someone needed to hear this today. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside some peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Let's worship you. I love you, Lord.
Father, we thank you that we can know that you're with us. Thank you that you send little signs and little messages. God, you're always speaking. Sometimes we just have to be smart enough to look and listen and see what you're doing in the world and what you're doing in our lives. But God, thank you for your constant presence, for walking beside us through whatever it is, good times and bad. God, we thank you. We praise you. And we love you this morning. God, I pray that you would just uh, go ahead of us, that you would um, bless every element of the service, our special music, the preaching, and give us open hearts. Help us receive what's prepared for us today. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. At this time, our children are dismissed to Children's Church. The rest of you, fellowship uh, safely. <laughs> So I'm going to be honest, it's been a while since I've sang, and part of that's because some of the stuff that I've been dealing with, like when Donovan sang that song, I'm fine, yeah, I'm fine, oh man, I feel you, man, I feel you, because it's so easy to say that. It's a whole other thing for it to be true, and you know, I think we're taught to tell everybody we're okay, even if we're not, and we've got to get over that. So. When I was working on thinking about what I wanted to sing, I, I was kind of going back and forth between two. And Leah was down the hall working on some homework, and she's like, Mom, this is what you need to do. Um, and, and so I was like, are you sure? She said, yeah, Mom, do this one. And there's, 
The second verse says it hits you without any warning. The storm of your life has begun. And that's kind of how I feel like the last couple of months have been in my life. And so I'm going to try to get through this without singing, uh, without crying. <laughs> I guess I better sing. I guess I better sing. Paul, can you turn this down a little bit? It's really loud. And you know I'm loud anyway, so I, I, don't, I don't need extra loud. Um, I have the blue one. Um, so anyway, I'm going to sing your cries of a woken master. And I've always loved this song, and having Kaylee here this morning makes me feel a little bit nervous because when when um, the three of them would sing, and I, I just love this song because it's so beautiful. And in truth, I know we've all been there, but it's really easy to say you've given your problem to Jesus. It's a whole other thing to really do it. And why do we have to get to that bottom? Why do we have to feel like we're sinking before we realize that and do it? I don't know, but man, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Like, I'm like, oh no, I talked to the Lord. It's all good. It ain't good because I'll pick it right back up. Amen. And I know, I know I've been in like, like I have that drug problem Scott always talks about. I was drugged to church from the time I was born. Like the doors were open, I was there. So it's not like I don't know. I just have that part of me that wants to control everything. Like, I have a really hard time giving up control, even when it's to the one that controls everything. So, now that my heart feels like it's beating out of my chest, and, and it's wet up here, and I don't know if I'll get through anything, y'all pray for me, because... The disciples were getting concerned. The wind started violently blowing, but he was asleep in the stern. Does he not care that we perish? We're helpless and we're so free. Jesus arose when they called him and said to them,
just one word from his voice, and it all must be. Gone for a week. I don't know how I'm going to follow that. That was good. Thank you, Christy. That's so true. There's so many things that we always uh, put on the face, and we're like, oh, yeah, I'm good. Life's good. Things mm -hmm. are great. Uh, but they're not. And uh, I appreciate your willingness to do that. I, I do appreciate Donovan singing that song a couple weeks ago. That was good. Uh, it was great at the time, and that's a message we should we should remember. That's one of the things, though, that the church is supposed to do. That's what we're here for. This should be the one place you should come and be like, look, I'm not fine. Maybe you have to put on a face at work or put on a face at home or put on a face in front of your kids or, or, or maybe in front of your parents. But here, you don't have to put that face on. I want to encourage you. If, that's some, if you're going through something today, uh, as you leave today, go up to somebody and let them know, look, I'm not fine today. This is what I need you to pray with me about. This is what I need you to help me with. That's what we're here for. We're all in this together. Part of that will lead to growing pains. As a matter of fact, if you're watching us at home today, uh, or even here in the building, we've had some growing pains uh, today as we've uh, added a new praise team member, as we've got a new computer and new software running, and we've uh, readjusted the stage stuff. We got, we're going through some technological growing pains. So uh, if you're watching online and things are a little bit weird or a little bit different, um, just bear with us. We're, we're making some changes. But not only does that happen in our tech, when you're adjusting the technology, and I'll talk about that a little more later, but it happens in all kinds of areas of our lives. But before we get into that, uh, it's good to be home. It's good to be home. For those of you who, who weren't here last week, uh, neither was I. So, uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, my family had a great vacation. A lot of you guys have asked about that. Um, and I, I thank you all for the birthday wishes last week. Uh, so as, as great as that time away was, it's always good to come back home. And I'm, I'm really happy to be back with you guys this morning. Uh, I missed you. I, I did get recruited to play bass at my brother's church last week. So uh, I don't get to play music with my brother very often. And it was a good time. Um, but there's no place like home. And uh, I do, I don't know if he's watching. Um, Probably not because he's a Baptist and we're not. But Alan, uh, I want to thank Alan Thompson for filling in very capably last week. He did a wonderful job. Uh, and he mentioned a trip to the Holy Land, a trip to Israel. If you guys are interested in more information about that, there's some bulletins and brochures that he left for us on your way out the door. And you can check that out. Um, but uh, there are some pastors who feel like they can never miss a Sunday because there's no one to do all of the things that they do. There's no one to fill in and preach for them. Uh, they don't feel comfortable uh, doing that. Uh, but I've never had to worry about that here with amazing teachers available, both from within Landmark, like uh, Jim Norman and Beth Steele, who you can now find on the app. Faith of Steele is live on the app. I didn't mean to embarrass you, but it is wonderful. It is wonderful. So if you haven't checked it out, you should. Uh, so Jim Norman and Beth Steele can fill in for me from here anytime. I never feel nervous about uh, putting, leaving them behind. But, but also some amazing pastors, preachers in this community like Alan Thompson and some of our other friends. Uh, so thank you so much. 
uh, for the opportunity to get away. So uh, as we switch gears a little bit to prepare for what God has to say to us this morning, let's pray together. God, thank you for time away. Thank you for rest, whether uh, we've had it this week or not. Thank you for uh, friends and family to come alongside us and lift burdens. God, we ask that you'd speak to us today. God, you've already been here. Your presence is among us. We've heard it through the songs. We've heard it through uh, all the words that have been said and the prayers that have already been prayed. God, there's still more for us to learn from you today. We ask that you would teach us, make it plain to us, that we could leave this building with renewed vision, renewed purpose than when we came in. In Jesus' name we pray. So uh, the title is Growing Pains. So the question I have is, do you ever remember having growing pains like as a kid? Does anybody remember that? So some of you still do. You're still growing, right? I am, right? Mm -hmm. Right? But I remember like, like being a kid, maybe four, five, six years old, and like my legs would be really achy sometimes, and I wouldn't know why. Uh, it even woke me up once or twice when I was like five or six, and I was like, Mom, my, my legs hurt. What's wrong? She's like, oh, it's just growing pains. It means you're, that means you're growing up. Anybody else have that? Just me? Yeah? So you guys remember that? Mother's Day is coming up next week. It's just kind of a, was a fun memory that, that I had uh, about my mom. But it turns out I did some research on this because I was like, well, like, do I just remember? Is this a thing that moms say or like, is it real? Does it actually hurt to grow? I, I don't know. And so I, I looked it up. Turns out that's not really what they're from. Uh, yeah, mom lied to me, uh, so, among so many other things, right? Um, but no, uh, they're not actually due to growing. Uh, it's mostly just because like as a kid you just run a lot and don't know when to stop running and so you just over you just hurt yourself but you don't know because you're a kid uh, but anyway that answer we call them growing pains and that answer is enough for most of us as children and you know you go to sleep and they go away and eventually you grow out of that stage where you overdo it um, some of us are haven't grown out of that yet uh, but you do eventually and while physical growth may or may not cause actual discomfort, uh, growth or change in pretty much every other area of our lives certainly does, doesn't it? Anybody been through a change that felt great? At least initially it was a little bit uncomfortable, right? And, and that's really what we're going to talk about. At first, see, this, these changes can be difficult. Let's think about the most common changes that most people uh, in this room or watching at home have gone through. Maybe you've gone through all of these, but at least one of them. Uh, moving from one house to another. Maybe you've moved out of your parents' house, moved into college, or moved away for work, or whatever. But we've moved at some point, right? We've uh, changed jobs. Anybody ever done that? Yeah? Maybe you have learned new skills at your current job. Maybe you didn't change your jobs, but you had to learn a new way to do it. Uh, I'm sure almost everybody's had to go through that with the use of remote learning and remote technology lately. Uh, I know that I have. I've had to learn how to use, use some new stuff. Uh, maybe even something as simple as changing vehicles, right? Like you just get so used to your old car, and you get a new car, and nothing's in the same place unless you buy the exact same thing that you just had, which sometimes we do, right? But most of the time you get a different vehicle and even just a small change, it's like you, uh, you know, even uh, we have two vehicles and so uh, they both have push button starts, but they're in different places. So for like the first two weeks after we got the van, I kept pushing the dash because it was, it's down here in the van and it's up here in the other car. So I was just like, oh, it's not, it's not there. Uh, but but those are changes that require growing pains, adjustment periods, upgrading phones, computers, TVs, or other technology. If you've ever done that, it, it, there's a learning curve there. Even if you change every year, something's always different. There's an adjustment where it's like, I don't know how to use this thing. My parents call me about that all the time. Uh, I had to buy my dad a new computer while we were down there. It came in after I left, so I still haven't called him to help him set it up. Uh, but like there's growing pains with that. It's difficult to learn how to use new things. And while these changes are, un are uncomfortable at first, most of the time we adjust and we can't imagine doing things the old way anymore, can we? Right? 
Uh, I was afraid to ask this question, but has any would everybody anybody want to go back to a flip phone? Anybody? Some of you have never left the flip phone, uh, and that's okay, right? That's okay. You don't have to change, right? But but like there are some things. Can you really say you'd rather go back to VHS instead of Blu-ray? Right? Or Betamax, if any of you were like into Betamax, right? Yes. Would you would you want to go back to that? No, no, you wouldn't. Right? Would you want to use eight tracks instead of CDs? Yes. Some of you would? You can't even rewind it, man. You gotta go around the block to get your song again. Like this is my cruising song. Oh, it's over. I gotta go back around and cruise again. Right? Right? But but change, once we've adjusted to most change in our lives, we're like, man, I couldn't imagine doing it. Couldn't, like you switch vehicles, and normally it's to a newer or, or better car, and you're like, I can't imagine going back to the old car. I can't imagine living in my old house now that I've adjusted to my new house. I can't imagine going back to my old job now that I'm back at my new job, right? Like we, we experience those things. But the thing is, our faith should be a lot like that too. And here's what I mean, and I didn't make this up. Romans chapter 12 uh, we're going to read the whole chapter today, but we're going to start with just verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed, which means change, which means growth, by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. All right? Don't conform, but allow scripture and the Holy Spirit to change you from the inside out, starting with your mind. That's doing new things. That's learning a new way to do things. There's growth. There's uh, adjustment period. There's change that comes with that. It can be difficult. And then it says, you know, so you can test and approve what God's will is. Well, what do, what's God's will for your life? Well, Paul tells us in the, the verses that follow. In verses 3 uh, through 21, Paul explains this is what God's will is. And you'll know once you've been transformed. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. But rather think of yourself with sober judgment. In accordance with the faith, God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. If it's to work in the nursery, sign up with Shannon and work in the nursery. If it's to work with children, see Lauren, because she needs children's workers. It's the same, it applies, right? Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal or enthusiasm. We don't use zeal a lot anymore, but it's enthusiasm, right? But keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position, whatever that means, whether it means they make less money than you, or they drive the wrong kind of car, or they voted for the wrong person, whatever that means, all right? Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, that means to do your part to live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. 
for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, or instead of that, our job, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. There's a lot of stuff we could preach on in there. Romans 12, is, a, is a, there's a lot going on, but it all kind of comes together with this idea. So how is, the, how is those verses, how is all of that stuff like growing pains? Well, because allowing the word of God and the Holy Spirit to make those changes in us, to make us live like that, is an uncomfortable process. It is hard to think of yourself equal with everybody else. It's hard to associate with people of a low position, whatever that means in your life. It is hard to love your enemies and pray for them, and not just pray that they get hit by a truck, right? The other kind of pray for them. It's difficult to, to feed your enemies. It can be difficult to be hospitable. Sometimes you just wanna clam up and live in your house, and people are out there, and I like it in here, right? Anybody like that? Uh, your house is your house. It's difficult to be hospitable, right? So it can be an uncomfortable process when we allow God to change us to bring us more in line with those things. But if you stick with it, you won't be able to imagine going back to living the old way before God changed you. And these changes don't usually happen all at once, but like physical growth, it takes time. It takes time. It takes time to discover your spiritual gifts. It can take time to know how and where to use them. It takes time to learn to put the needs of others ahead of your own. Anybody got that figured out? No, it takes time. It takes time to hate what is evil and love what is good. It takes time for us to even learn the difference. Some things look good. We talked about this on Wednesday night. Some things we think look good. This is gonna be a blessing in my life. But it's a curse because it's what we thought and not what God thought. It takes time to learn the difference. It, it takes time to practice and to be hospitable. It takes time to adjust to blessing those who curse you instead of seeking revenge. It takes time and practice to rejoice with those who rejoice instead of comparing your life to theirs and being jealous. You ever thought about that? Somebody else is rejoicing because something good happened in their life. How easy is it for us to just say negative things, to be like, oh, yay, congratulations. But in our mind, we're jealous because we wanted that promotion. Or we wanted our life to be in that place. We wanted to, the good things to happen. But rejoice with those who rejoice. Don't be jealous. Mourn with those who mourn. Don't feel sorry for them. Be with them in that moment. It takes time to understand how to do that. It takes a lot of time and a ton of practice to learn how to be at peace with everyone and not take revenge when people wrong you. It takes time and practice to overcome evil with good. There's growing pains associated with that. To allow God to work in us and to make those changes that are complete opposite of the way we, are, the way we want to do things. It's hard to do that. It's the first time you forgive somebody instead of seeking revenge, it hurts. It's hard, it's uncomfortable, it's growing pains. But I promise, if you stick with it, you cannot imagine going back to being a vengeful person. It's so much more peaceful to just be like, all right, God, God's gonna take care of it. If they come to my door, I'm gonna feed them. If they come into my house, I'm gonna give them something to drink. God's wrath is better than mine anyway. I, I can't imagine being a vengeful person anymore. I used to be. Said and did some really bad stuff. Luckily, Facebook wasn't around yet. Right? You know, can I get some amens on that? Right, yeah. But once we get there, once we've, once we've started to take these steps to allow the word and the spirit to bring us in line with Romans 12 and all the other things God calls us to be, once we've started the process, once we really open ourselves to God's work and will in our lives, 
Church, we'll never want to go back. We'll never want to go back. Once we start to allow God to transform us by the daily renewing of our minds, we won't even recognize our old selves. We'll look back on our lives and say, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did those things. I can't believe I acted like that. You almost be embarrassed of your old self. Anybody ever been there? None of us are perfect yet, but if you've walked with God for at least even just a little while, you can look back and say, I can't believe that that used to be me. We won't be able to imagine not using our gifts to serve other people. We'll just feel empty keeping them to ourselves. That's why I don't mind, like, when I go on vacation, like, go to other churches. and to, Even if I go to my brother's church, and he's like, you want to play? I'm like, heck yeah, I do, because I feel weird not using my gifts. And also because, like Christy, I'm a little bit of a control freak, and I don't want to just sit in church and not do anything. It's weird. <laughs> Isn't that weird, Scott? You're enjoying it. Good. <laughs> Good. Happy vacation. Sorry to ruin my, my analogy. No, right. But no, we'll feel so empty inside not using our gifts to serve other people. If you have a gift to, to work with children and then suddenly you just stop, right? you see a kid and it feels weird to not like help them, right? doesn't it? I got some teachers in here. Would it be weird for you to just stop teaching? Because like, you're passionate about that. That's a gift God's given you. It's weird to not do that. right? We won't be able to imagine willingly doing what's evil in God's eyes. Once we've started to make the change and God reveals to us things that we should and should not do, we can't imagine saying, hey God, guess what? I'm going to go do that thing you told me not to do. Right? We can't imagine doing that. We won't be able to imagine withholding our resources that could help someone else. We see someone else in need, and we can't imagine saying no, especially if I can meet their needs. Right? Once you've allowed the word of God to start to change you into that person God's called us to be, you can't imagine going back the other way. We can't imagine going back to the poisonous cycle of seeking revenge on those who wrong us. And it's a poison cycle, and this is why, because you... They wrong you, and then you wrong them, and then they wrong you, and then you wrong them. Nobody wins. But once God changes you and you step out of that, you'll be like, I can't believe I ever was dumb enough to do that. Growing pains. We never want to go back. And like many of you, I know this because I'm in the middle of this process. Like Paul, I'm not there yet, but I'm reaching forward. I'm striving. I want to get better because I've tasted the growth. Church, I've seen what happens when I let God in just a little bit and say, God, change me. I'm so glad I'm not the person that I was. Even just my, my wife and I, Lauren and I, will be married eight years in September. It's not like a big milestone, but it's, it's long enough that we've changed. Things have happened. And I can't imagine being the person I was when we got married. I can't imagine going back to being the husband I used to be. We've changed. God has changed me. We've grown together. I can't imagine going back. I'm in the middle of this process. I haven't mastered any of these things. I'm not always as hospitable as I should be. I'm not always as kind as I should be. I'm not, I don't always let things go. Sometimes I'm much more argumentative than I should be. Anybody else with me on that? Like, you know you should stop, but you just gotta prove to them that you're right and they're wrong, right? I'm trying to let that go. God's changing me. I haven't mastered these things. I'm not done yet, but I can't imagine going back to living my old life, even if I have to go through some more growing pains. Even if I have to learn to let go of some things that I really like. Even if I have to let go of some people that I really like. Sometimes growth means change. And sometimes that means your friend group has to change. The people you spend time with has to change. The things you do with your time and money have to change. And that means that I'm going to have to, there's still more change coming for me. There's still more growth coming for me. There's still more growing pains coming for me. But I've tasted enough to know that it's worth it. I can get through those because I know that God is telling me, like my mom did so many years ago, son, it means you're growing up. It's okay. It won't hurt forever. It won't hurt forever. 
and you're going to be a big boy. Sometimes God says that to us too. As we get ready to close our service today, growing in our faith is not always pleasant. You guys can, if you've walked with the Lord, you can look back and know that there's some changes that have happened. There's some growth that's happened, and it hasn't always been easy. Always been good, but not always been easy. But just like growth and change in any other area of our lives, it's always worth it. So this morning, the challenge before us, each and every one of us, is to first and foremost trust God with our lives. God can't grow you until you hand over the reins. God can't change you into a, the best possible version of yourself until you let him in. And that's hard. Christy talked about that. It's hard to give up control, even though we know God controls everything. But that's the first step. Whether you've been a believer for 100 years or whether you're not sure about this Jesus thing, I encourage you to say, God, you can have it. You can have it. You have to first trust that God knows better than you. Trust that there is sin in your life that has broken the connection to God, but that Jesus' death and resurrection have provided the only way for us to reconnect. And once we're reconnected, God can change everything. If you trust and believe that already, the next step for us is to allow God to transform us by the renewing of our minds. That's not a one-time thing. That's an every single day thing. Maybe even an every minute of every day kind of a thing. How do we do that? How do we allow God to transform us by renewing our minds? Well, we got to read scripture daily. I don't care if you do it with a physical Bible or you do it on your phone or computer or whatever. You got to get in the word. You got to see what God has to say. You got to let him speak to you. You have to pray every day, all the time. Scripture tells us pray without ceasing. And prayer doesn't mean sitting there and closing your eyes and putting your hands to it. We teach that to our kids so they know that it's an important thing. But you can pray to God while you're driving. Please keep your eyes open, okay? <laughs> or else you'll see Jesus real quick and maybe, <laughs> maybe you'll bring somebody with you, you know, right? But pray all the time, okay? You can always be in constant communication with God. There's no hanging up that phone on, the con on that conversation. He's always there willing to listen. Our cries will awaken the master. He's listening to us. Read scripture, pray, and fellowship with other believers whenever you get the chance. When we come together, we can work through our growing pains. Right? Because somebody else has been where you are, and they're where you want to be. You can connect with them, and they can tell you how they how God got them there. There's something you can learn from them. You can't go it alone. Let's pray as we stand and, and sing together one more time. God, thank you for changing me. Thank you first and foremost for saving me from, uh, from an eternity in a hell that I didn't even know existed. Thank you for giving me a connection to you not just so I could come and, and listen to weird songs and hear some dude tell me about Bible stuff, but God, and this is a, a real deal. It's not, I don't, God, you didn't save me to come sit in a church. You saved me to change my life so I could change the lives of those around me. And sometimes that growth is uncomfortable. God, thank you for the growing pains. It means I'm becoming more like you. God, we ask for each and every one of us here, that's whether you're in this building or watching online, whether you're here live with us now or watching this two weeks from today. God, help us get through the growing pains. Encourage us. Help us to lean into growth because it's a good thing. It may be uncomfortable now, but it's always, always worth it with you. In Jesus' name we pray.
That's our challenge today. Let God grow you. Let God change you. It's always worth it, even if it's uncomfortable. All right, thank you so much for joining with us today. You are dismissed.